hello ladies and gentlemen welcome to to our channel i want to do a reaction on this video on the african diasporan channel and this video we have a south african journalist that uh is part of the african diaspora channel uh team journalist team talking about uh, the backlash south africa has been having ever since uh, the recent uh, xenophobic uh, attacks and hate attack towards the Nigerian uh, Chidima who ran, who was running for the Miss South Africa uh, beauty contest. She was practically bullied from what we understand. There was a lot of xenophobic attack towards her. Uh, we wouldn't say racism because this is coming from uh, blacks or Africans, but the hate she received was something that uh, shocked the world and we have uh, these uh, journalists on the african news the uh, african diaspora news channel uh, talking about this she's south african so we, what i'll do is i'll let her speak and i'll come in with my commentary okay the puebla international literature festival in mexico an annual event dedicated to celebrating literature and promoting cultural exchange has resigned at south africa's designation as the country in focus for the 2024 festival hello my name is renee lomarema and i am your host right here on the african diaspora news channel reporting live from johannesburg south africa the festival has started to withdraw invitation it has it has given out to South African authors. This follows a controversy over the withdrawal of Miss South Africa finalist Chidima Arichina, who has been the subject of xenophobia on social media with many, including cabinet ministers, questioning her citizenship. Organizers of the festival, who also withdrew invitations that had been extended to South African authors, cited recent developments that deeply troubled the African community. In the letter uh, released by the festival's organizers, it reads, It is with a sense of sadness that we acknowledge the distressing events in South Africa, where the apparatuses of the state, coupled with the troubling silence of many within the cultural sphere, have enabled a climate of mob rule. This has led to the victimization of Chirima Arichina, her family, and members of immigrant communities in South Africa, thus undermining the very principles of justice, equality, and human dignity that literature seeks to uphold. Festival director Ikina Oke said in this letter, Oke continued to say that the festival aimed to be a beacon for the celebration of diverse voices, cultures and ideas. The organizers believe that literature has the power to challenge the status quo, speak to the authority and give a voice to the voiceless. However, they cannot in good conscience honor a country as a focal point of their celebration when it is currently embroiled in profound injustices, particularly those that have gained momentum following the Miss South Africa beauty pageantry. Oke okay, added that its decision did not reject South Africa's rich literary heritage and the many courageous writers, poets and artists who continue to inspire the world. Now, Minister of Sports, Arts and Culture, Gaten McKenzie, responded to the statement released by the Puebla International Literature Festival by saying, South Africa was a sovereign state and all laws must be respected. I feel like, if we're being honest, I feel like the world seems to be forgetting that Chidima's parents broke the laws and it's an un in, uh, undeniable fact. It is said that the world is shifting focus away from the South African victim, uh, victims of identity theft and what the impact of identity theft has done to them. Many parents struggle. Okay, so I will just stop there and give my, my take. First, this problem is not about, uh, I don't think uh nigerians or the rest of africa because this problem has has been i would say it went really out of hands because blacks you know all over the world have reacted to this situation and everybody is just stunned by what is happening in south africa this is not the first time this is happening there have been a lot of xenophobic attacks in south africa where nigerians were targeted uh, specifically and killed we're not talking about one two three four five six seven eight people with ten we are talking of tens of people that have been killed that have lost their life due to xenophobic attacks south africans claim 
Nigerians or other African immigrants are coming into their country illegally and taking their jobs. This is the same rhetoric that a lot of, you know, uh, uh, hate groups, uh, you even have the FBAs and the ADOs in America, they use the same, uh, you know, uh, rhetorics. This is the same agenda to push. These immigrants come here to take our opportunities and all that. But <coughs> what I must say is, I haven't noticed this coming from other ethnicities you don't have hispanics you know fighting hispanics like that and claiming like they're coming here to take our jobs i think people are outraged by the way the south africans attacked this girl bullied her and you know treated her but we didn't see the same reaction when it came when it come, we, did, we don't see the same reaction when it comes to other you know south africans that are, are not maybe fully south africans or like the winner of the south african beauty contest she's actu actually a white girl i think from uh, france her parents are french people of french descent so if we're talking about you know uh you know uh uh national identity or ethnic uh, ethnic uh, representation you know cultural representation of south africa so i ask the question is the miss south african right now a perfect representation of the south african culture and values is she south african genetically like so let's let's try let's stop the double standard this girl was attacked because of who she is she is black she is not light-skinned and of course she's nigerian and we all understand and know there's a serious hate against nigerians in south africa not only in south africa in a lot of african countries why due to their success there are people that will expose your insecurities when they come somewhere they don't sit and cry they, they, they wake up they work hard they build wealth they achieve things and they achieve a lot of success wherever they are so i think uh, she's not being very fair when she says the world is, is uh, seems to forget the challenges south africans go through due to identity theft we understand that is a problem and even as uh, as an african of a different nationality i understand and i respect that and i will never support that people should go into another person's country or land and be engaging into this identity you know appropriation because they you know for whatever reason we understand there are downsides to that on you know on the side of the people of the uh, south africans wh whose identity are being appropriated and on the side of the nigerians that might end up being born in that country and in case like in like let's say we take the case of chidima right now she's suffering of the action of her mother but what are the reasons that push the mother to get, you know, to to engage into this, uh, you know, this action? I'm sure as Africans, we all speak Pan-Africanism, let's come together and build together. But we cannot neglect the fact that, you know, some African countries don't really have that, you know, that Ubuntu spirit in them. They don't have that Ubuntu spirit because... The least thing we, we say Africans should be able to travel and feel free wherever they go, just like Europeans are doing. A French person can go come to Greece or go to France or go to or go to Germany and they will be able to they just need to go to the police, declare themselves, and they get a you know they get a, a resident permit and they're able to act, work and do whatever they want to do. So we preach Pan-Africanism, but even the people we call oppressors are practicing it, are practicing that more than us. So I think she's out of she she's she's you know she's not being very fair it's saying you trying to use the the backlash South African is facing is due to the hateful speeches the threats the light the death threats and the, the you know the aggressiveness by which this girl was attacked she was this this was this was something personal and that is why you see other organizations are distancing themselves from South Africa and I don't understand why it's so hard to understand this is exactly the reason it's not about her you know having a, you know a fraudulent identity it's the way the attack was being perpetrated south africans manifested a lot of hate and that is why you see the world right now is reacting to that and south africans must understand nigerians are very powerful people they are everywhere in the world there is no institution international institution you will go there and not see nigerians there at the top 
We can't say the same about South Africa. South Africa is a great country and all that, but when it comes to international things, South Africa is being dominated by the whites and the Indians. They own at least 85% of that country's land. And when it comes to the companies and the, the factories and everything, like it, the whites and the Indians own at least 95% of that country's economy. So South Africa does not belong to South Africans. Other country, uh, so uh, Africans, uh, Africans of different countries, and you know, blacks in the diaspora are reacting to asking, why is it that South Africa got this so much energy for other Africans in their country, but they would not, they, they don't have the same energy against the whites and the Indians that are practically, you know, ripping off their economy. Because I can guarantee you something, the whites in South Africa and Indians, they are very aware of what they're doing and where they come from. And if South Africa didn't have something to offer today, the resources and whatever, these people will pick their bags and leave. They might tell you they are South Africans, but they, they, this, is, this is just politics. That is just some diplomatic, uh, diplomatic games they are playing. They do not consider themselves South Africans. Right now, it serves, them, uh, it, serves, it serves the agenda to say they are South Africans. But if South Africa was to crumble today and have no resources or anything to exploit, ex to exploit these people would leave. And they wouldn't lack a place to go because even Australia, when there was a problem, you know, they, they, they were feeling threatened by the EFF of, uh, uh, you know, the EFF uh, political party. We already saw uh, Australia offering them free land and, you know, free citizenship for them to relocate to Australia. If they were Africans, why is it that when we have migrant problems, Australia doesn't offer to receive all, uh, Africans as uh, migrants in their country? So we must be... I think we should be more careful and be more aware of the game that is being played. This is not about the identity theft. This is how, this is about the hate that was manifested towards the system. Okay, let's go. I go to register their children in schools or universities and find it hard to find a job because, you know, they are not registered in the Department of Home Affairs. Mackenzie highlighted identity theft as a serious crime in the country. I personally know of South African children who have taken their own lives after being rendered statusless due to identity theft, Mackenzie continued. Mackenzie added that South Africa was home to many foreign nationals who had legally applied for citizenship and refugees who genuinely needed the country's help and resources. He said the presence of people who had fraudulently obtained citizenship not only undermined the rights of South Africans but also did a great disservice service to those who were in the country legally and needed assistance. Mackenzie also released a statement on X saying look how easily South Africans get denied by this festival. Innocent South Africans because they expect us to allow a crime to be overlooked or uh, overlooked or a recipient of a crime. Uh, let's let's get this clear. I don't think South Africans are innocent. Let's just be clear. So when he says, uh, the minister says, uh, innocent South Africans, I mean, that, that, that doesn't sit well with me because, like I said, this is not the first time South Africans are attacking other African immigrants. Why are they not? There are a lot of Pakistani, there are a lot of Indians that are illegal immigrants in South Africa. There are a lot of whites in Cape Town that are illegal immigrants in, in South Africa. Why don't they have that same energy for them? That is what everybody is asking. Why is it always towards the Zimbabweans, which are, I mean, who are more even like ethnically connected to South Africa, Zambians, you know, people from Namibia. I mean, every African country, you know, that is represented in South Africa has dealt with xenophobia and hate. So I think the minister is not being very fair in his statement. We must be very, we must be very conscious and, you know, try to be fair in our analysis of this situation and not let emotions of, you know, dominate our, our take on this. The minister, what he's saying based on the identity theft, it's a pro it's a situation that affects all communities based in South Africa. I'm sure if we go into the white communities, we'll see people that have that are uh, that are using identities that are not theirs. And we let's not forget, a lot of South Africans do monetize their 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 their, their documents to to other foreign nationals to use them as you know to get a uh, citizenship or to get the resident uh, resident permit let's also talk about that the south africans that monetize their 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 documents to other african uh, uh, immigrants 
to be able to get a, a situation in South Africa. They take money, they monetize, they sell their, 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 their documents for these people to use and to be able to get uh, maybe a resident permit or citizenship. It's a known fact, even here in Europe it happens, but you don't see Europeans, I mean, it happens, you know, some uh, 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 neo-Nazi and racist white supremacist group, they, they, they do attack uh, immigrants from time to time, but this is what people are talking about. You don't have the same energy for the white people, for the Indians, for the Pakistani, for the, for the Asians, and we are not saying you should attack them, but we are saying we see the double standards and that's the problem. A benefactor of a crime. And you know what? I agree with Gate and McKenzie. I can't believe I am saying this. I, to a certain extent, I agree with Gate and McKenzie because we are overlooking the crime that has been inflicted by the the people of South Africa. A lot of people can't be registered at varsities and get jobs because they don't have a, 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 a citizenship. They couldn't be registered because of this theft. So we are overlooking that. We are overlooking the criminal activities that were brought on by other African immigrants in South Africa. But we are quick to judge South Africans for standing up to um, for their own country. That is no, uh, I'm sorry, Miss, but that's not what we're talking about. The situation is about how South Africans attack this girl personally, bullying her. This is not uh, this is not the first time we have uh, this lady that was half you know south african by mother and half uh, ugandan by father she was bullied the same way they called her kere kere or something like that kere kere or something like that how do i know that word she said it that's a derogatory term that is being used to insult uh, other uh, african immigrants in south africa you know just like the fbas who called uh, africans tethers and all that and uh, I'm not surprised she's having this take because this African diaspora news channel, I must say, it's a, you know, it's a hateful uh, uh, YouTube channel that instigates hate against West Africans, especially Nigerians. So I'm even surprised she's talking about it because you didn't see them come out criticizing South Africans for their actions. But so, I mean, like the whole world is criticizing South Africa. The whole world is saying what, you, what you're doing is wrong. So I don't understand how it's like the whole world can be hating on you for no good reason. The whole world can be complaining about you for no good reason. Xenophobia has been the like the hashtag of South Africa. So this is not about uh, identity theft. And let's if we go into this matter, did she steal these documents from like break into somebody's house to steal it? We must also mention if she negotiated with a South African to buy these documents to have citizenship. And now, we, are we going to call the South African a thief? So let's not use words that white supremacists use to, you know, to stereotype black people or to stereotype immigrants. I think she's being very harsh with her words, and that 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 tells a lot about her true personality. So yeah this i can't it's a double standard for me yes the way miss adichina was treated on x was uncalled for because i am sure she did not commit this crime it is her mother that should be bearing the brunt of our wrath but at the exactly now she's now you're talking you're making it clear the way she was treated they went out of bounds to bully this girl to tell her all type of inhumane things to insult her to threaten her life that is not how you handle a situ an administrative situation identity theft is an administrative situation that should be handled by the right bodies of the government let that be handled by the right like by the right uh, structures of the government not by south africans coming around and bullying this lady bullying the sister and trying to you know to make her life a living hell in south africa so that's exactly what they're talking about end of the day yes a crime is a crime a crime is a crime i feel like the treatment was uncalled for but we had to, to we had to act to send out a message to those that still think they can live in this country illegally so and take the opportunities of the people of this country is that you see that's the same propaganda live illegally in this country and take the opportunities of this like come on 
then why are we talking about pan-africanism or oh, the unity of africa that doesn't make sense how could africans take your opportunity no if there are opportunities and people are taking this advice you know getting these jobs is because the south africans don't want to do it they say the prices the, the prices the the, the the salaries are low and all that other people are struggling to survive so i think the problem should be south africans problem should be with the business you know the the, the business uh, structures that employ these africans the the savvy b business uh, people in south africa that are taking advantage of these immigrants to pay them low wages to do the jobs south africans should be paying more attention to that and mounting pressure on their government to take actions to prevent such things from happening you can't tell a hungry man not to eat when he sees food in front of him no that's not correct you know or they should create a, like associations and all that with the african immigrants and set standards by which they want them to work i think it's something that could be handled the right way let's not talk about the uh, africans coming and taking uh, 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 opportunities and because they are south africans also working in other african countries should these african countries say they are taking an opportunity uh, taking their their jobs no there are a lot of south african businesses in other african countries so i don't think uh, she's being she's very bright you know the way she speaks uh she she she's very emotional and she's not being very professional as a journalist well so that's my take on this situation it's quite sad i hope uh, south africa learns from uh, the backlash she's face she's feeling and uh, she's facing from this uh a very messy situation and i hope they learn something from it I hope uh, we as Africans get to understand that uh, we, nobody wins when the family is feuding and all that. And yeah, I mean, it's really sad. I just wish things would be different and we hope things will be different. Thank you very much for listening to my reaction. Uh, if there's anything you have to say, please let me know in the comment section. What do you think about this whole situation? And uh, yeah, see you on the next video. Ciao.